Okay, I'm here with uh, Brewmaster, I can say that right? You can, well, you can say that, sure. Yeah, Brewmaster Steve from Riverwalk Brewing. And uh, we're going to check out something that he built. We're actually in his dining room right now. And this is something that every homeowner really should have. It's a four-tap kegerator system. It's definitely an essential part of any, uh, you know, any home, I think. Yeah. The, the, the reason for the size of this uh, is because um, the basis for this, this particular kegerator was a chest freezer. So if you try to imagine this without this, this wooden collar in here, um, when I originally purchased it, it was a plain chest freezer like you might have for you know, frozen food in the basement, something like that. And um, part of what's great about that is that it allows you to have a lot of horizontal space without a ton of vertical space. So the dimensions are very good for building a kegerator like this. Um, part of the other reason that we can do four taps in here, and I'll open this up now so you can see, is that we are using, um, using five gallon kegs. Uh, these particular kegs are former soda kegs that I've used for my own beer, but you can also get commercial kegs that are basically the same size, five gallon kegs. They'll have a different connector on them, but the idea is pretty much the same. Um, what I had to do in order to make this kegerator work was to, uh, number one, add this wooden collar, and this is just some extra uh, baseboard molding that I had kicking around. So I built this up. You can see I sealed it with uh, with silicone, so we get a nice uh, you know a nice tight seal on there. And the thing that was good about that was I didn't have to actually drill any holes into the side of the freezer for my taps. All uh, right, so you get the the tap space, but you're not compromising the uh, thermal ability of the the cooler. Yeah, and the other thing is there are you know there are coolant lines running throughout this, and I wouldn't want to drill one of the through you know, through oh, right. those as well. Right. So this allows me to make sure that I'm not doing that and not have to, you know, if I ever want to turn this back into a freezer, I'm not sure why I would, but <laughs> if, I ever, if I ever did have to, I could. Um, so there's there's two main components to this. There's the, the plumbing for the beer, which you can see uh, runs from these lines right up to these shanks, which go through the collar to the taps. And these I, I pinned up so they'd be out of the way when you opened up the, uh, the lid. And then we've got the gas plumbing, which is these red lines right here. This is carbon dioxide. I'm sorry, this is CO2. Okay. This, is how we, this is how we push the beer out of the taps. Um, so we've got a, uh, a small five-pound bottle of CO2 right here. And from that bottle, it goes into this manifold, which splits it into four separate lines for each of the kegs. So we can turn those off individually if we need to. Um, we can adjust the temperature, excuse me, adjust the pressure if we need to. And the, uh, the CO2 bottle just sits right inside the kegerator as well, so we don't have to, you know, drill another hole in the outside for any reason. So why does this have two gauges? Well, this is actually um, fairly typical for a, a, a CO2 tank. Um, this gauge tells us what the pressure inside the tank is. Okay. And this is what the actual output Okay. Is. So this allows us to dial in the pressure that we want coming out of the CO2 bottle very finely. Uh, because there's a lot more pressure in there and we have to, you know, we really only want about, you know, maybe 10 to 15 pounds per square inch to push the beer. Okay, so this thing is beautiful. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you, you built this thing all yourself. Now for... Somebody like myself who has a barn who's sort of kicking around the idea of how cool would it be to have some beer on tap um, and what comes to mind is an old refrigerator and yeah. set that What you're up. saying is absolutely true. The easy, probably the easiest way to start out and to set yourself up with a kegerator is to get an old refrigerator. Um, there's a million of them on Craigslist. You can, you, know, you can typically find one. You don't even, even if you don't have a tap set up, you don't want to get fancy with it, as long as you have a refrigerator... You can make a kegerator. Um, I'm just going to grab this hose over here. You could literally get the um, get a small CO2 bottle like I've got in here with a regulator. You could have that running into a keg. You can attach this to your keg, and you can just open the door of the refrigerator, right. and then so no need to even even go through the, the the fridge door. No, you don't have to. But if you, if you want to, it's actually very easy. Uh, really, all you need to do is find the spot in the door, 
And you, do, you typically want to do this through the door because again, the sides will have refrigerant lines running through them and you don't want to drill through those. So find a spot in the door, you want to drill a hole, and all you need is one of these setups. You need um, the tap and then this, uh, this sort of shank that goes right through. And you've got a nut on one side and there's this plastic sort of washer on the other and you, you tighten them up together and you screw this component together and it's, uh, you know, you need some lines for the beer to run through. Then you need some, you know, you need some tubing for the gas to run through, but that's that's really all there is to it. It's not, you know, it's not that complicated. Okay, um, two quick questions. Sure. For getting the equipment, do you have yeah. any um, online resources that... Great online resource for that. There's a website, um, micromatic.com, just like it sounds, M-I-C-R-O-M-A-T-I-C, micromatic.com. And they actually provide equipment to... Uh, both, uh, you know, somebody who wants to put a kegerator on their house, as well as professionals like bars, restaurants, things like that. They've got a lot of great resources in terms of, um, you know, finding out what equipment's available, what you might need. They have, you know, they'll, they'll sell you a kit. They'll say, you want to turn a regular refrigerator into a kegerator? Here's our kit. It's got everything already, you know, prepackaged. You can just go ahead and do it yourself with instructions. There's, um, you know, information about different keg sizes, etc. So that's the first place that I would send you. Nice. Yeah. But does it also make financial sense, maybe in the end, to, to be able to buy it in bulk like you, that? You know what, it, it certainly can. And, you know, it's like a lot of things. The, the, you know, obviously, the, lo the larger volume you purchase, the better deal you're going to get. To answer your question about freshness, yeah. the keg will stay fresh for quite a while. Uh, here's the reason why. Unlike those, you know, those sort of pump handles that you see at, like, you right, know, keg right. parties, um, you're not introducing any oxygen into this. This is CO2, and the reason that we use CO2 is it doesn't react with beer in the same way as oxygen does. When you pump oxygen or, or atmos you know, atmospheric air into a beer, it starts to oxidize, and that's where you get those off flavors, and the cake starts hmm. to turn, it goes bad. CO2 is, you know, it's basically an inert gas as far as beer is concerned. So mm -hmm. it, just, it just sits there, and it, um, you know, it, it really will stay good for quite a while. Okay, so... So you think it could last a summer even if we, <laughs> well, well you know, it depends on the drinkers around the neighborhood. Yeah, but, uh, but you could, you know, you could definitely go, you know, like a month or two with the, a month or two with the keg and you, you know, it might, you might notice some change to it, but it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be extreme as long as it's cold, yeah. which it would be. And it's got the CO2 in there. If you keep it, if you keep it 50 degrees or below, I think that you could, you should be all right. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that. The warmer the temperature you have it when you're trying to serve it, the more foam you're going to get. So you want it when it's the um, the recommended temperature is about 38 degrees for a um, you know for a keg system. Hmm. Now you can run it you can run it 45, you can run it 35, you can you know they rec you know the the sort of industry recommendation is about 38 degrees. I like you know I like some of my beers a little bit warmer, but um, and, you know in in the summer in the barn. You might want it a little bit colder because it's gonna it's gonna warm up as soon as you you know basically right. as soon as you get it out of there. Right. I wouldn't you know I wouldn't have those fluctuations. I wouldn't turn it on, chill it down. Right. That you bet you know what you're much better off getting uh, something that's efficient in terms of cooling and just having it stay at a fairly steady temperature. Yeah. So when you talk about getting a refrigeration unit, yeah. maybe not go for the. Completely old school, fifties yeah. cool look because no, it's, no, you know. no. those those older refrigerators are enormous power consumers. You can get right. you know, anything that's relatively you know recent is going to be much better in terms of that. Yeah, I would, yeah, I'd highly recommend. And you bought that. this thing new, All right? Yeah, this this freezer was new. And the the one thing I forgot to mention about using the freezer is you do need an additional piece of equipment if you want to do it with a freezer. You need a temperature controller because this wants to freeze. Things. Right. Now what I have is a uh, a temperature controller unit where I can actually dial in the exact temperature that I want this to be. Mm -hmm. And all I do is I plug the freezer into one end and I plug a, an extension cord into the other and into the wall. And this basically, there's a little, um, similar to uh, my other setup, there's a temperature probe that sits in here. Mm -hmm. And then this regulates the temperature. This regulates, um, you know, when the freezer turns on, when it turns on. Thanks, Steve. This is Peter Means from Dover Projects. See y'all. See y'all later.